Welcome to Talking Comfort Live, a video podcast where HVAC professionals go for fun, learning, and sharing while exploring the world of mini splits, heat pumps, and the inverter technology that brings efficient comfort to our fascinating industry. We're looking for you to be a part of the show. If you have a question, whether it centers around application, installation, preventative maintenance, troubleshooting, a future technology, or anything we share on the show, send it our way by clicking the question mark icon to the right of your screen. Now, on to Talking Comfort Live. Hello, and welcome to Talking Comfort Live. I'm your host, Dwayne Butler. We're excited to kick off 2024 with you. If you're not familiar with our program, this is an opportunity to connect with our key team members and become more comfortable with the latest in Greek comfort. Today, we'll start off with a technical tip from Greg Brunts that covers some important steps that are often overlooked when you're installing a dual fuel system. Then, we'll hear from our product department as Justin Silsbury takes us through the current state of affairs when it comes to the change to A2L refrigerants. Next, Tatiana from our marketing department walks us through the Greek Comfort website and the marketing toolbox. And finally, I will show you an exciting new unit here in Ohio Studio. It's right off the truck, the new Ultra Heat Multi Pro unit. As a reminder, while we're covering all this today, we're hoping to strike up a few conversations. If you have questions or comments, use the question mark icon to the right of the screen to send those questions our way. We'll let everyone present first, and then we'll regroup at the end to start answering any relevant questions until we run out of time. With that said, let's send it over to Greg in our Atlanta studio. Greg? Thanks, Dwayne. Greg Brunts here with GREE. I want to talk to you about doing dual fuel applications with the GREE Flex unit. So with that, let's jump right into it and talk about the requirements and the installation of the Flex unit in a dual fuel application. So first of all, you're going to need a two heat, one cool, dual fuel capable thermostat. That dual fuel capable thermostat can be with or without an outdoor temperature sensor. It also can be a dual fuel capable thermostat with or without Wi-Fi. Thing is though, if it has Wi-Fi, it will use the temperature from the local uh, weather app to determine what the outdoor temperature is. That allows you either with an outdoor temperature sensor or with the weather app to be able to go into that thermostat and say whatever temperature you decide that the gas furnace will take over and do all the heating. It's not required because with the dual fuel capable thermostat, the way they work is the first stage is going to do your heat pump heating. Your second stage is going to be your gas heat. That's the key to dual fuel. The dual fuel thermostat is not going to let the heat pump and the gas furnace run at the same time. And you can't have them run at the same time because if you think about it in an upflow application, if you've got a gas furnace, the coil in the supply, because the coil should always be in the supply, so the coil is above it, the, heat, the furnace is trying to re release its heat, the heat pump is trying to release its heat, and they can't both release their heat at the same time like that, and then therefore the heat pump gets really aggravated and probably be in the, out on high pressure in doing that. So that's why I have to make sure only one or the other is running. So, all right, so now you know the requirements, so let's jump right into doing the wiring on it. So I have a wiring diagram here to kind of go through. So first of all, your Y connection, I'm showing it at the furnace with a splice, but again, that's gonna determine what furnace you're using because some furnaces do have a Y1, and they may even have a YY2. And then what I've also know about gas furnaces is when you get G in there, especially if you've got an ECM blower or a variable speed blower, that thing is only gonna run at 50% of the blower speed, and that's not gonna be fast enough for that heat pump application. So if you have a Y1 and a Y2, you need to look at the furnace instructions to get the right CFM, and determine whether the Y from the thermostat needs to land on Y1 or Y2 to get the proper blower speed for heat pump, heating, or cooling mode. So secondly, you're probably not gonna have a B terminal in here. So your B terminal is for reversing valve. So it's just gonna get spliced at the furnace and then you need to go into the thermostat. If you have an OB terminal, 
make sure you set that up to energize the reversing valve during heat mode because the reflex unit is the reversing valve is energized in heat pump heating mode not in cooling mode like a lot of other manufacturers do and then as far as auxiliary heat goes your furnace may have a w it may have a w1 and it may have a w2 it all depends on the furnace so in this application we're just showing this is a single stage furnace so you would use W2 or auxiliary, depending on the thermostat, it's going to be one or the other, and that's going to be your second stage heating to bring on the gas furnace. But in dual fuel application, it will not send power out on wide, therefore the heat pump won't be running. Now if you have a two stage furnace and you have a W1 and a W2, then your thermostat you would need a three heat and it would be W3 or auxiliary and then that would go to your W2 in order to get your two-stage furnace working properly. Some of them also have auto stage and you can set it up that way. Again, refer back to your furnace installation instructions and that'll help you determine what you need to do there. The rest of the connections are pretty basic. It's R to R to R, just like any other heat pump or air conditioning setup. Same with common all the way through and your G for your blower for fan on. And then lastly, optional float switch. It can be put in between the thermostat and the furnace or in between the furnace and the outdoor unit. We just want to make sure you understand you have to break Y going to that flex unit in order to get the thing to shut down. Because if you break R going out to this flex unit, it will not shut the unit down. R is out there for one reason and one reason only with the flex unit, and that is for the relay to be able to send the 24 volts back during defrost. So let's talk about defrost for a second. So let's say we go into defrost and we get a W1 signal from the flex outdoor unit and it engages the gas furnace, which is perfectly fine because at that point, the heat pump's gonna be running in cooling mode with the outdoor fan off. The air conditioning coil will be absorbing heat. So all it's gonna do is aid in defrost. It's not gonna hurt anything. But I want you to keep in mind with the flex outdoor unit, the defrost cycles are rather short, usually only about two minutes, and the chances of that furnace getting through its initial startup sequence to actually light that furnace, the flex outdoor heat pump is probably going to be back in heat pump heating mode by the time the furnace ever lit. So you may or may not want to connect that up, and I'm going to leave that up to you guys out in the field to determine what you want to do with that. So lastly, what we need to talk about in dual fuel applications is you should put a transition fitting between that furnace and that coil just because we want to make sure we're not going to have any issues with the drain pan and that we get good flow from the furnace through the entire evaporator coil especially if the furnace is larger or smaller than the evaporator coil we need a proper transition fitting to force all the air from that furnace through both slabs of that a coil so we get proper airflow through the A-coil during heat pump heating mode and in air conditioning mode. And we're not restricting the airflow on the furnace so that we don't end up having the furnace cycling on limit. So with that said, hope this all helps you out. And with Gree, remember, we're always by your side. All right. Thank you, Greg, for breaking down that information as you did. I know that's going to help a lot of people out in the field installing our products. Okay, now Justin, another topic that people are asking for a lot of help with is the industry change to A2L refrigerants. Let's go back to Atlanta and hear about Grease status with that refrigerant change. Justin? Thanks, Wayne. So today I want to talk about the upcoming refrigerant change. So if you haven't heard, the United States signed a few global climate treaties such as the Kyoto Treaty and the, up or the following Kigali Amendment, and that put a limitation on our greenhouse gas emissions. And how that affects our industry is that we now have an upcoming refrigerant change to low GWP or low global warming potential refrigerants. Uh, this new program is also better known as the EPA's Technologies Transition Program. So what does that mean for us? So in January 1st, 2025, all ductless, flex, packaged products and our multi-pro will have to change over to a new low GWP refrigerant. Our three-phase DRF systems won't be changing over until January 1st, 2026, so one year later. How we'll be handling that is GRI has decided to go to R32. Why did we choose R32? 
Well, obviously, R32 has a low global warming potential. It's below the 700 threshold that has been set by the EPA. R32 is also shown to have more capacity than 410A and more efficiency. So we'll have better performing units out there. R32 also doesn't contain any of those dangerous fluorine forever chemicals like some of the other refrigerants out there. So it's gonna be less toxic, healthier for you to handle. R32 also doesn't have a patent on it. So that should make it more readily available and less expensive than some of the other competing refrigerants out there. Also, R32 has been used successfully around the globe safely with no problems, no big issues. However, what you have to know is most of these new low GWP refrigerants are known as A2L refrigerants. The A means it's low toxicity. If you see a B in that position, it means it is toxic. The two is more likely the, the sticking point for most people. Uh, the two means it is slightly flammable. So all of these new refrigerants coming out will most likely be flammable. That's going to require safety changes to the equipment, such as uh, indoor sensors that detect refrigerant leaks and shut the unit off to prevent any kind of uh, fire or anything like that. That will also change the inventory strategy for most of the distributors. So we'll have all new equipment coming out next year in 2024, gearing up for that 2025 changeover. And we also have to note that all of the R32 equipment coming out is not backwards compatible to the old 410A equipment. It's new refrigerant, new compressors, and because of the safety requirements, you can't take R410A ductless head and put it on an R32 outdoor unit. It won't work and it's unsafe. So with that, contractors will have to undergo additional training on the refrigerant, how to handle it, how to install it, and how to service systems that utilize these new A2L refrigerants. That's also gonna require new tools, new gauges, uh, new recovery tanks, things like that. So what we need everyone to understand is this problem is not gonna go away. You have to embrace it. It's going to be the law. I know we're all bemoaning it. We're all kind of unsure what's gonna happen with this changeover. Uh, You've already lived through the last two probably. We went from R12 to R22, and then R22 to R410A, and it was a major pain, uh, but it never went away. You either had to embrace it and move forward, or, <laughs> or you just probably didn't do business anymore. So what you need to understand is that there will be winners. The people who embrace this technology move forward with it full steam ahead, and there will be losers. This presents a great opportunity for your businesses out there if you embrace it and you train on it and you understand it. As more information becomes available, we will be publishing resources in 2024 to help guide you through this change. We'll be updating our training presentations, we're setting our 2024 training schedule, and keep on the lookout for new product bulletins that we're gonna send out through our usual means, email, LinkedIn, so on and so forth. The best resource for additional information will be our website, greedcomfort.com. Also, you're gonna to wanna to tune in monthly to Talking Comfort Live as more information becomes available. We're definitely gonna be talking about it here on the show. So if you have any specific questions, please feel free to reach out or your local rep. Thanks, back to you, Dwayne. Thanks, Justin. I'm sure we'll have more updates to share in the upcoming shows about the changeover to A2L refrigerants. So, Tatiana. Take us through what everybody here at GRE already knows is a very valuable resource, our website. One of the best resources for information in our industry. Tatiana? Thanks, Duane, and hello to our GRE partners and contractors out there. Based on many requests, we thought it would be helpful to give you a quick rundown on GRE Comfort's latest cool features. All the support you need is just one click away whether you're a contractor or a distributor. For you contractors out there to quickly access all the information most important to you, click on the contractor button on the home page or go to the contractor drop-down menu on the top navigation bar. There you'll find on-the-go tech support. With just a few clicks, you can review the tools and best practices before you install Agree. 
with some quick tip training videos and troubleshoot any error code with step-by-step -step instructions. Or access the System Builder app to help you build the right degree system for your customer. Documentation. Need a submittal or a sales brochure? Go to the system documentation and you will find everything you need in one place. Parts. Go to the parts lookup page to search for the exact part you will need for a GRI product. In our rebate section, simply type in the zip code in your area and all the latest rebates appear by product model. Finally, don't forget to sign up for a GRI Select dealer and register your latest projects for the 10-year warranty. All this can be done from the same drop-down menu. And for you distributors watching, let's walk you through how you access the latest tools to help you sell more GRI. Start by clicking on Distributor button on the home page, or go to the Distributor drop-down menu on the top navigation bar. There you will find a form to request a GRI training class for your customers and or your employees. A GRI system builder app to navigate our many product options. A live feed tool to search all available rebates in your customer's zip codes. A section for warranty to look up and registration. A GRI part lookup page is also available here to search the exact part you will need for any GRI product. A simple online form to claim damage freight. Another simple form to submit your marketing co-op expenses. And of course, access to all our product documentation and literature. And don't forget to check out the other sections as well because the website has so much to offer our homeowners. I'd also like to leave you with another really good resource that you might not even know about. It's our GREE Marketing Toolbox, available at greecomfort.com slash marketing dash toolbox. After you go to the web address, you'll need to enter the password, GREE Marketing. Here you will find brand content, like variations of the GRI logo, product logos, equipment photos, and our color palette. It will be important that you first review the brand guidelines PDF at the top of the page. This will ensure the logo is used in a way that maintains the visual standards that help us all convey a consistent professional image. By scrolling down the Marketing Tool web page or by clicking on the advertising link on the left side of the page, you'll find examples of advertising materials you can download and use. Finally, the Marketing Toolbox provides access to sales brochures and resource materials to help you promote your business effectively. Everything on this page is downloadable ready for you to apply to your presentation as you wow your customers. It's just another way to show you that at Green, we're by your side. Back to you, Duane. Okay, thanks, Tatiana. That should really help us to find things we're all looking for on the website faster. And you really do need to take advantage of that great marketing toolbox. So it's a new year. You may say, so Dwayne, give me something new, something exciting, something exciting to talk about. Well, I can tell you we have just the product for you, the new GMV6 MultiPro product. The Green MultiPro just got bigger and better. Our new sixth generation unit is offered in a three, four, and five ton. You all asked for a five ton and Green delivered. There just isn't a heat pump out there that heats like this product. Unlike other cold climate heat pumps that are simply rated to minus 22 degrees, but only provide 50 or 60% of rated capacity, the new MultiPro Ultra provides up to 100% of rated capacity to as low as minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Our already amazing ultra heat circuit has gotten even better. With fewer moving parts and utilizing an electronic expansion valve, we feature fine-tuned direct vapor injection, delivering an unmatched heating performance. Our defrost cycle has been improved as well, using thermistors and algorithms. If the system can produce enough heat while ice is on the coil, it will simply continue to heat. In other words, if the unit doesn't need to run in defrost, it won't. If the system does need to defrost, it will only defrost as much as required. This eliminates the energy waste and the downtime caused by conventional heat pumps using time defrost cycles that create unnecessary defrost cycles. Don't forget that the Green MultiPro is an excellent air conditioner too. These Energy Star rated models feature a C-shaped outdoor coil and a liquid cooled inverter board, allowing efficiency ratings as high as 23 C or 2, and continuous cool comfort at outdoor temperatures in excess of 126 degrees Fahrenheit. Some of the key points of the Green Multi Pro are three models, 36, 48, and the additional 60. All models are Energy Star. Efficiency ratings up to 23 C 2 up to 100% of rated heating capacity at minus 22 degrees, a new outdoor coil design, a liquid cooled inverter board, and an improved defrost cycle. So that's what I have for you today. It's time for us to answer some of your questions. So as a reminder, click that question mark icon to the right of your screen to submit your questions and comments, and we'll get right to them. What we're going to do now is we're going to run this short video while we start queuing up your questions, and we'll be right back. I'm one of the fortunate people who actually enjoys heating and air. <laughs> it's definitely a community, you know? It, you know, every, every tech gets to sit at the parts counter or something and talk to another tech. And that's my wife. I talk about this kind of stuff, like, way too much. She says I'm a nerd. But you know, the thing is, I mean, like, I work with a bunch of nerds. Everybody on our team has done this for a living. Every one of them has been in an attic or under a house. They've not had answers. They've been having to wait on the phone. They're digging through manuals, trying to find those answers. They actually care. They care to get the help that these folks need. That's why they do it. It can be a dream job for folks. I mean, it really can. We've long been a leader in technology in the United States. Inverter-driven systems, particularly the communicating inverter-driven systems, it's the only way that it can be done cost-effectively and efficiently. It really is. To me, by your side means we're doing the next best thing to standing there with you when you're trying to work on a unit. Whether we're on the phone with you or, you know, it's a video or it's the manuals themselves, it's about providing the support that you need in order to fix the equipment that you're working on. It's what we do. It's, um, it's an everyday thing. It's an all-day thing. I mean, we're all going to be, you know, uh, parents and spouses and, and, you know, family members and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, when things slow down, we're still thinking about that one unit, you know, that we could never figure out. Welcome back, and thanks again to our team for all the work and input to put together this great content today. So now let's go ahead, let's take a few minutes, let's go to the questions that we have in, in the chat board. The first one is a tech question, it comes from our friend, it looks like Jared Shankel, and the question is, I'm going to defer this one to Greg, is there a manual that provides the blink codes for the air handler alarm control board blinks when you have some across when you have some across multiple units which blowers would trip off no for no apparent reason that is pretty in depth so greg you want me to read the question again no that's okay i got it uh so I, i'm assuming he's talking about the flex air hand uh, it doesn't really say on the product but i'm assuming right. that's what it is i'm assuming that's what he's talking about as well and I really don't pay a whole lot of attention because really all them lights really do is basically tell you it's in fault. So by if you reset power to the air handler and turn it back on, that blower come back up and run runs, then it probably went out on, on a temp not really a temperature safety, but a limiter of the of the ECM motor, and it could very well be because the CFM is not set right. That would be the first thing we need to check is make sure the line voltage is correct 
make sure that the dip switches are set according to the CFM we want and actually measure the static pressure to make sure we are delivering the amount of air that we need to be delivering and it's coinciding with the blower chart on that unit. So okay. uh, there is a bulletin about those. If you do that and all of that is set correctly, the voltage and everything is correct, then and you reset it and the blower does ends up doing it again, then the board's generally not the issue. It's the motor. We're going to have to replace the motor. All right, so kind of an in-depth answer. Uh, Jared, I, I suggest uh, you can take Greg's feedback. If you still don't get the answer, you can go to greekhumford.com. There's a quick start guide on setting up the Flex. If it's not the Flex product, you need additional help. You'll also find the number for Greek tech support. I suggest you call into the tech support team and kind of give them more, a little more detail, but thank you for the question. Wayne, I do All want right. to comment, comment one more thing on that real quick. So I, I just want to make sure it's clear that we don't want to jump into just replacing the motor because many, many times our tech support team, including myself, has resolved those issues just by making sure that blower was set up pro properly. Okay. All right. So look at the quick start guide. If you have a question before you change the part, why don't you call our great tech support team? All right. The next question is going to be from Chuck at JSH Mechanical. James, I'm going to direct this question to you. And the question is, which is best, an estimated balance point with a switch over to gas or just let the flex maximum output determine at the point the indoor temperature need would need to change to second stage heat? So I'm, this is a dual fuel application, James. Basically, he's asking how she set the balance point, when he should switch from the flex over a unit to the backup heat for the gas. So I think that, you know, the answer that I would like to go with is just let the flex run. Uh, just let that run and if um if um you know it wasn't able to keep up or something like that then i would say just you know the, the thermostat would automatically let it select the the gas uh, furnace option um now as far as like an energy usage type thing it does take a, a fair amount of math and that would be based on the amount of uh amount of that you're paying for electricity for the um you know as far as kilowatt hour from the utility company versus how much you pay uh minus the uh, efficiency losses of the gas furnace, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so there, there's quite a bit of math to be done on that if you wanted to do it based on what would be most cost effective as far as heating the space. Um, but, um, I mean, generally speaking, I would just let the flex do its thing. And, um, you know, once it gets cold enough, if it's not able to keep up, then switch over to gas furnace. Good. Okay. Thank you, James. All right. Next question we're going to address to Justin, uh, our head of product. And Justin, the question is um, from Matt at Hagerstown Heating and Cooling. When will Gree introduce the smaller footprint air handler? And I'm assuming that again is for the flex. Yeah, if we're talking about the flex, I'm working at the factory to uh, develop some smaller air handlers, you know, the more traditional style American uh, dimensions and everything, less weight uh, as well. Uh, so that is something we're working on. Uh, uh, we're also looking at the uh, apartment style fan cools. If you're looking for something like that, like in the wall or a fur down type unit. So we're working on some new air handlers uh, the next uh, year or so. The problem is, you know, most of our attention has been focused on the R32, you know, the A2L refrigerant changeover. Uh, so that's kind of held us back on releasing some of these new newer products that we're wanting to get out there. But the next couple of years, we should have something out there in the market. Okay, follow-up question for you, Justin, from Hagerstown Heating and Cooling. And this, I think it relates especially to the two three-ton flex. I want to know when uh, the, the uh, flare port adapter is going to be revised and move outside of the cabinet. Okay, so he's talking about on the, the two-slash-three-ton yeah. flex. Uh -huh. uh, so on our newest flex eco models, those have already been addressed. Uh, on the new flex ultras, uh, that will be addressed in the new R32 version. All right. A lot of great questions. Okay, so we're going to go back one and question. This is going to be for Tatiana. And Tatiana, here's the, the question from a customer is, what resources are available in the green marketing toolbox to help distributors promote green? Thanks, Dwayne. That's a great question. Um, 
the the green marketing toolbox has uh all of our green logos all of our advertising assets all of our product uh images so Good. everything you need to promote green all right follow another question for you tatiana and it comes from steve warner at rapid cool mechanical steve says i missed the password that tatiana mentioned for the marketing site that password, Steve, is GREE with a with a capital G, and then GREE marketing all together. Well, Tatiana, we got you're popular today. We got one more question for you. How can contractors sign up to be a GREE Select dealer and register to get the ten year warranty? Oh, that's another great question. So they go on GREE on GREE Comfort and click on Contractors, and then become a GREE Select dealer. Once they become a Green Select dealer, they will be notified that their account is active and then they go onto their account and start earning by clicking on the home button that says start earning. And there they will they will register their 10 year for the 10 year uh, warranty. Okay, James question. Thank you, Tatiana. I've got a, a question for you. The question is when can the Green Multi-Pro units be twin like larger brf systems can so i believe is can we twin like the two five ton single phase condensers so james that question's for you that's not a current option um as far as twinning those uh the two single phase units together um you know we have the option of using you know a 10 ton three phase unit in that case uh, but right now there's there's no option to twin uh, the two single phase uh, multi-pro style units so let me uh, add on to Justin. Justin, in the next product generation, is there, we've discussed that with Gree. Have they given us any updates if that's going to be a future, maybe in the coming after refrigerant change or anything like that? No, currently there's no plans to uh, be able to twin together the single phase multi-pro. Um, I, I see why some people want to do it, but I personally would recommend against it uh, for the simple fact of redundancy. If one system goes down, um, you'll want the other system to run without any issues. And if you start twinning them together, then you're going to have to start messing with controls and ball valves and things like that to try to get uh, the you know the good system still up and running. So it's so the so, follow up questions come out for me. So probably what our experience is is we're selling a lot of uh, places where they're twinning two ten ten air handlers with two condensers. Uh, we have great control options so you can run, let it run seamless, seamlessly as stage one, stage two. And, you know, for most of what we're selling, that seems to meet the need. But, you know, if there's something to change, we'll make sure and broadcast that out. All right. So let's sign a ticker. We've covered most of the questions in the site. So do we have any new questions coming in? All right. Let's go through them again. Make sure I didn't miss any. All right, one question here. This is for Greg. Greg, can you give us an update on the status of the error, to, error code tool for mini splits? Is that up and working on the ReComfort site? There's a question on how to how to find the error code tool. So if you go under, if you go into ReComfort.com and you go under the contractor tab, there's an error code troubleshooting tool. Once you click on that, it'll load that error code troubleshooting tool. And you can just type in whatever error code you want information on. It is a functional tool. Okay. All right. There's a whole, here comes some new ones. This question is going to be for uh, Justin and product. It's from James Davis at Davis Heating and Air. Can the flex heat pump be connected to a micro channel indoor coil? We don't recommend it. Uh, we prefer you to stay with the tube and fin coils. All right. Let's see. We have any other questions we mixed. All right. We'll give you one last chance. Anybody wants to submit another question? Otherwise, we're going to get prepared to sign off. Oh, here comes in a new one. Oh, great. From Russell Childress at Method HVAC Services. To touch on flex air handlers again, are there any plans on releasing a 120-volt version? Just currently, currently, no. Um, with the air handlers, our current plan is to stick with 220. We've talked about releasing a 120 version. Um, could be something in the future that we have, but as of right now, it's not on the docket. So if I could add to that, there are some third-party air handlers that uh, 
that are 120 volt that are rated with the flex. And that'll be part, we'll be talking about those next in a, an upcoming uh, Talking Comfort show. So stay in tune, stay tuned, and we'll have some more on that. And there, that's a request we get a lot, especially in the West. California seems to be a big place. That's a demand. So we'll have more information on that in coming shows. All right. Looks like we've got some got some more questions coming in. Great. All right. This one here, again, is for our product leader, Justin. The air sensors for R32 refrigerant and other necessary safeties, will those be green parts or aftermarket? That's from Jared Schinko at, at Ariat Mechanical Services. So the refrigerant leak detection sensors for the new R32 units will be included in every air handler. So those safeties will be built in. They'll come from the factory that way. All right. So then we have another one from Rodney Klein at CNC Mechanical Installations. And so the question is, Justin, will there be a downflow, downflow kit for the air handler soon? And that's for the, I'm assuming again, that's for the flex air handlers. Yes, currently we do have a downflow kit available uh, for the flex air handler. Uh, that downflow kit will also work uh, with some of the GMV models. For our Flex Eco, which we just released at the end of the year, um, we're working on a downflow kit for that one. It will be available uh, for the next couple of months. All right. So we have a follow-up question asking the same question. So just to reiterate, for the Flex units, we already have a downflow kit. It's an accessory option. Uh, you can find the information on that to, on the Agree Comfort site. Yeah. And I'd like to reiterate that our A coils that are made for the Flex, those are already multi position so if you have an A-coil with the downflow furnace, uh, that's already an option for you. Okay, good questions. All right, let's see. We got any new questions coming in? All right. All right, that looks like everything. All right, great, great, great feedback from you in the audience. Thank you again for taking the time to join. We really appreciate the feedback and the interaction. Uh, just a reminder, this show will be broadcast the first Wednesday of every month at the same time. And so you'll have the same time to give feedback and submit questions like you did today. The panel will be here to answer the questions. In the coming months, we're going to be talking about some of the new products we have. We'll be talking more about the A2L refrigerant change. And the idea here is just to keep you all up to date on everything that's happened with greed. There's a lot of behind the scenes things going on that we're, we're doing. 2024 is going to be a great year. We wish you all Happy New Year, and thanks again for taking the time to join us today. We appreciate your input and appreciate your time. Hey, thanks for watching Talking Comfort Live with Gree HVAC. Make sure to keep a lookout for an invite to our next show or subscribe to our Gree Comfort YouTube channel to make sure you get notified anytime we release new content.